trying to <laughs> trying to keep warm. <laughs> He's struggling in the cold. He's weak. Okay, I'm fine. Now he's fine. Move to the macho, macho. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Hi everyone, good morning. I'm Sanara and this is Ruben. And we are presenting the kids half hour from way down south of the world. Can you guess where we are? No, no, we're not in God. No, not Hikkadu. Shall we give them a clue? Yeah. Yeah. So, the national symbols of the country are the golden water, the emu, and the kangaroo. So, any guesses at all? Did anyone shout Australia? Because if you did, you'd be right. We are in Melbourne, which is a city in Australia. So, how was your Saturday? Did you do anything fun? Would you like to know what we did? We went to the park with our friends, but we lost something. Mm -hmm. We have a video of us at the park. Take a look and try to guess what we are missing. Where's Ashok? Ah, uh, um, he's a bike. Ashok is a bike? Yeah, I just saw him. Okay. Oh, also, I wanted to ask you, how's Daniel doing? What's he up to? Oh. He's an ice cream. What does that mean? I haven't seen Jonathan in some time. I wonder what he's up to. Oh, um, he's a book. Wait, I don't understand what's going on. Do you? No. There's something missing here, but we have, I have no idea what it is. Were you able to find out what's missing? What we lost at the park? I figured out what's missing. What's Shall missing? I tell you what it is? Tell me. Oh, of course, yes. Yes, you guessed it right. What was missing was the verbs. You heard me, right? The V-E-R-V-S, verbs. So, do you know what a verb is? So, it's what's used to describe an action. So, a doing verb. Do you get it? Just add the missing verbs and you will understand what Sinara was trying to say. So, Ashok was riding a bike. Daniel was eating an ice cream. And Jonathan was reading a book. Come on, let's use our mouths, hands, feet, arms and whole body to do some V-E-R-V-S verbs to a fun song. If your siblings or parents, grandparents, anyone who's around, are watching with you. Ask them to join us.
song Father Abraham. Good job with all the actions. You know, speaking of actions, today's Bible verse is talking about the things that we do. Our actions. It says in the verse that our actions bring glory to God. Now, the verse that I'm talking about is 1 Corinthians 10 31 and it says whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do it all for the glory of God now what does bringing glory to God mean it means bringing honor to God now as children of God we need to do the right thing and when we do that the people who don't know God will also honor him you know can you think of a story in the Bible where people were amazed by Jesus and they glorified him because of a verb of something that he did you know I can think of one, it's something to do with a little boy. Can you think of something? Wait, wait, I have a joke. What kind of joke mm. is it? Knock, knock. Okay. Who's there? Tony. Tony who? Tony fish. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I also have one. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Loaf. Loaf, Loaf who? who? I don't just like bread. I love it. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs>
Blessed be God Most High, the Creator of heaven and earth. I raise my eyes toward the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Please, take a seat in a row. We will serve you there. Please, move to that side and take your seat. You, please go to that side. This is indeed the prophet who has come to the world. Yes, he is our great prophet. My Lord and my God. A great miracle, wonder. We never saw such things before. When they had all had enough to eat, Jesus said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who okay. had eaten. Okay, I have some questions for you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have it on my phone here. And the first one is, what was the miracle that Jesus did? Oh, me, me, me. So basically, Jesus um, multiplied, food, multiplied the food so he can feed all the people that were following him. And get this, it was over 5,000 people. Whoa. That's a lot of people. Why did he need to feed the people? Ooh. Because they were too far away and they were hungry, so they couldn't, they weren't able to get food. Where did he get the food from? So he got it from a little boy who had five loaves and two fish. Okay. And how do you know all the people had enough to eat? Hmm. Because each disciple was able to collect one basket of food each, which meant there were 12 remaining baskets of food. And what did the people say about Jesus after he did the miracle? So basically, like they glorified him because I know if I were there, I would have been absolutely amazed by that too. You know, they were amazed and they glorified him. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like God loves it when we share. You know, it's actually one of the best verbs that we can do because it glorifies Jesus when we do so. Because this little boy decided to share his food, the people were able to eat and they gave honor to Jesus. Hi everyone. Do any of you have little siblings and do your parents ask you to babysit them while they have a nap or take a bath? Well, today I have for you a simple craft that you can easily make and you can use to keep your small siblings happy and your parents happy as well. Hey, did you notice? Babysitting is also a verb. And it's a verb that I'm sure your parents would love you to do and would certainly give glory to God for what a good child you are. Here I have with me a fish, similar to what the little boy in the Bible story we just read gave to Jesus, except this is an origami fish. And we're gonna learn how to make one right now. So all you need is a square piece of paper like the one I have here, except it can be any color that you want it to be. So I'm going to show you how you can turn this piece of paper into this origami fish. 
The first step is to take the top right corner of the piece of paper and fold it diagonally to meet the bottom left corner of the paper. Once you've done that, open it up again so that you have it flat and do the same thing except this time you take the left hand, the top left corner of the paper and fold it diagonally to meet the bottom right corner of the paper. Once again, once you've done that, open it up again, like this. Next, you need to fold the paper in half, but you need to fold it in half by bringing the top half of the paper over to the bottom half of the paper like that. Um, you need to use your right hand thumb and slip it into the gap between the two folds right there and you need to pinch down with your thumb on the inside and your forefinger on the outside pinch down and push to the left up along this fold and fold in and you should end up with a fold just like this like the one I have here where you have sort of trapezium with a flap like this the next step is basically the same thing but on the left hand side so you use your left hand thumb instead of your right hand thumb With two flaps on the right side and two flaps on the left side. For the next step, you need something to draw with, so a pen or a pencil. And once you've gotten that, you need to draw a slanted line from the tip of this triangle all the way to the bottom right there. Take the top right flap here, as you can see, which this flap, and fold it along that line. As well as you possibly can. Fold it along this line. Next, you do the same thing, but on the left hand side with the left top flap. But this time you fold it along this line, the edge which is the edge of this flap. So, what you need to do is flip it over as you can see here I added in an eye some gills and a fin to make it look more realistic but you can add in anything you want you can color it in add some scales do whatever you want with it, it's your fish. But yep, now you've got your very own origami fish. Hi there, I'm Uncle Johan, and I hope you are enjoying the lesson today on how we can bring glory to God by our actions. God has created us very uniquely and given us different talents through our bodies, whether we know it or not, and we need to use it for His glory. We have many examples of people that use their bodies to glorify God. 
I'd like to introduce you to an old friend of mine who does just that, but in a very unique way and has a powerful real life story that goes with it. I have had the privilege of accompanying him to many a school assembly, camp and youth event in Colombo, where he has not just displayed feats of strength, but challenged many young people to live vibrant lives for the glory of God. Here is my good friend, John Pritikin. Hey, I'm so glad you joined me today. Hey, when I first started doing this, I used to rip phone books in half, and over the course of time, I've had to adjust, and now I rip reams of paper. So I'm gonna rip this ream of paper in just a moment, but I also gotta tell you, at the end of this uh, program today, I am gonna rip these phone books in half. These are so old, they're from the 70s, I found them. And so I'm gonna rip that in just a moment. I'm gonna blow up a hot water bottle till it explodes. But right now, I'm gonna rip this ream of paper in half, okay? So here we go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, people ask me all the time, what do you do? What you do? What's your purpose? Why, why do you do and take your family with you around the world? And it comes back to a story. Um, it was a while back. I was doing an elementary school assembly. I'll never forget it. I'm watching all the students come in. I was playing music and, and all the students were sitting on the ground. And this one boy sat down, he had like really bright red hair. He sits down and he scoots over to these girls and goes, hi. And then all the girls go, oh, they pull away from him. So he scoots up to another set of girls. He goes, hi, oh, and they pull away from him. So I walked with the principal, cause he's, he's just trying to be nice. I walked with the principal, I go, hey, what's that boy's name? She goes, his name is David. I go, what grade's he in? He's in fourth grade, he's 10 years old. Again, he's just trying to be nice. I'm gonna do something nice to him, for him in the assembly. So I walk back over to the other side of the cafeteria. And as I'm walking back over for a third time, David scoots to another set of girls, goes, hi, and they pull away from him. But as they do that, a teacher walks over and grabs the back of David's shirt and stands him up and walks him out of the assembly. Well, now the principal is introducing me and that teacher walks in and she doesn't have David. So I run over to her. I go, well, where's David? She goes, he's in the office. I go, could you go get him and bring him back into the assembly? She goes, you want that kid in your assembly? I go, yes, ma'am. She goes, if I bring him back in here, you're gonna have to deal with them. You'll have to take him home with you. I said, would, would you just please get him? So she leaves. Well, the principal introduces me. I come up on the stage. I rip the, the telephone books in half. I'm about to roll up the frying pan. And she walks in with David. But she doesn't put David with all the other students. She puts him right next to me, like, huh? Like, deal with that. And she goes and sits down. When I'm doing my assembly, I'm telling my story now, and the students don't know it's me. And there's one part of my story I share when a teacher says some really mean things to me. And when I'm telling that part of my story, I'm kind of looking at that teacher, because I was kind of upset. And that teacher, she starts crying. Well, I get down with my program. I told everybody it's me in the story. The students were really emotional that day. I'm here today because I want everyone to know how special they are. And there's someone who's really special in the crowd. And his name is David. David, would you come up here? Well, David comes up on the stage. And I go, David, I want you to know, let's watch out for each other. Well, let's eat lunch with another. Let's be heroes. So I break the baseball bat over my leg and I take my wristband out of my pocket, just like this one. And I put it on David's wrist and David goes. And the whole school goes crazy. Those girls earlier who pulled away from him, they're like, David, you're so lucky, you're so lucky. Well, David goes and sits down. He doesn't sit down with like where he was at before, he goes and sits with his class. I go to the door to say goodbye to everybody because I give everyone a high five when they leave. And so all the students are walking out, I'm getting everyone a high five and that teacher's walking out to me. The like, mascara is running down her face, she's crying so hard. And I give her a high five, I hold her hand and she goes, I'm so sorry. I go, it's okay. And I give her a hug. I walk back over, take pictures with the students for the yearbook. And as I'm walking across the cafeteria, David meets me halfway. He goes, John, can I ask you a question? I go, sure. He goes, how'd you know my name? And I got down on my knee. I said, David, when I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of friends. But I have a feeling if you and I were in school together, you'd be my friend. And his eyes, uh, they fill with tears. He goes, I'm your friend now. And he gave me a hug. I realized that's why I do what I do. That's why I do school assemblies. That's why I travel around the world. Because I want people to feel that they're valuable.
My daughter has heard me share my story countless times all over the world on six different continents. And what touched my heart, what I realized a long time ago is that I needed to show her where everything took place. So we drove in a car and we got to the school I grew up at. I said, hey, Jaden, this is the classroom where that teacher told me all those mean things. We walked to the other side of the school and I said, this is where the, where the boys tripped me and I, I was bleeding. And I showed her the scar on my chin again. And I took her to the tree. It was right outside the school, the playground there. I said, this is where daddy ate lunch by himself every day. And we're walking back to the car. You know how you walk, your hand just kind of goes back. When my hand goes back and I feel something, it was my daughter. And she had grabbed my hand and with all her strength in her little body, she stopped me from walking and she looked at me. She goes, uh, with her curly hair and brown eyes. She goes, daddy. She goes, yeah, Jaden. She goes, I'm sorry that happened to you. I said, it's okay. And I picked her up. I'll never forget. She puts her arms on my neck and she just squeezed me. And she goes, daddy. I said, yeah, baby girl. She whispered in my ear. She goes, I would have eaten lunch with you. And uh, it touched my heart. Sometimes all I realized, sometimes all we need is someone just to be kind to us. You know what, that day, my daughter, she did not just say those words to me, but she said to the nine-year-old boy who ate lunch by himself, to the boy who would cry himself to sleep at night, to the, to the boy who would watch the older boys play a game he never got to play. And I've realized after all these years, healing words can travel through time and space and bring healing and mending to a broken heart. And I just wanna say that to you today. Maybe you've gone through a tough time. You didn't deserve the things that were said to you or done to you. But I just wanna encourage you, you're not alone and you are so special. Don't ever, ever give up. You are amazing, okay? So stick with me, it's gonna take me a little bit of time. So here we go. I'm gonna rip these phone books in half. And so there's four of them here. I'm gonna try my best. It's gonna be a little tricky, but here we go. Okay, so here we go. Come on. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I just wanna say if there's anything I can do for you, please go to johnlive.net. That's J-O-N-Live.net. Well, it's time to say goodbye, but before we go, we must do the most important verb, which is pray. So everyone close your eyes and put your hands together and let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We are thankful of the many chances you have given us each day of using our body, minds and strength to take actions that will bring you glory, just as Jesus, your Son, did when he was on earth in human form. Dear Jesus, please guide us through your Holy, your Holy Spirit to understand what you want us to do at all times. Give us your strength to work hard and to work smart so that you can be proud of us. We give you glory, honor and praise. Amen. 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 Yes? Ah, thank God. Finally, we got through. I'm reading my VIP early what it says to me it tells me that i'm never ever alone i'm learning how j-e-s-u-s came down to us and gave his best without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know our god knows exactly what i need so i remember this let's go when you ask he cares when you see Door. When you ask, he cares.